Hey YouTube, so this is my review for hashtag The Real Cinderella by Yesenia Vargas. Um, just like with the last video, I'm going to start off by reading the summary from Goodreads and then I'll get into all of my thoughts. A modern day teenage Cinderella, an all star varsity basketball player. Will the chemistry disappear when they go from anonymous to face to face? Geeky Ella Reyes is at the bottom of the totem pole at Westwood High. Her ultra-popular stepsisters refuse to be seen with her at school, and every day she comes home to a mountain of chores. Ella's only friend, and maybe crush, lives on the other side of her phone screen. She and Baller929 know everything about each other, except their real names. When they have a chance to meet at her school's Halloween ball, Ella must figure out a way to get there without her stepmom or stepsisters finding out. Is revealing her identity to Baller929 worth risking the one good thing left in her life? Or is he too good to be true? This is a clean, young adult, contemporary romance. Oh, come on. What is happening in the backyard? Why is this happening? You know something interesting about fairy tale retellings? We know how they're going to end. We know exactly what's going to happen. We just don't know how the author is going to get us there and i think that's one of the things that i like about fairy tale retellings because i'm not like okay oh my gosh is this going to happen is this you know is this a red herring is this whatever i mean i mean i like i <laughs> i guess some authors do do like fake outs and yada yada um there was like that pseudo love triangle that was starting to happen in what was that was her name bridget cashore the uh a curse so dark and lonely. Um, like, I feel like there was like that pseudo love triangle going on. I think that could have been interesting to explore more, but she stuck to the bounds of the story. And I feel like that ultimately is comforting to the reader because we know at the end of the day, we know how it's going to end. We know that it will end with the happily ever after. We just don't know all the insanity that's going to go in between. So, I think that's one of the things that I liked about this book. It was familiar, but in a different way. I found a lot of parallels to a Cinderella story, the 2004 Hilary Duff movie, rather than like the prototypical Cinderella story because this was about Cinderella. Um, side note, I loved a Cinderella story. I loved Hilary Duff. I was obsessed with her. Um, we have the same birthday, and for me, that was clearly, if nothing else mattered, if I hadn't already liked her music, if I didn't like you know the things the roles that i had seen her in that just like pushed over the edge like clearly we were meant to be this obsession that i had as a child it was meant to be that's not the point though i added this book to my want to read shelf a few months ago. i want to say maybe in april because puerto rican cinderella like i was down with that um and i wasn't disappointed i feel like on the one hand, I did like that it just, her Puerto Ricanness was kind of secondary, like in her appearance, in her name, and you know, she understood a little bit of Spanish and stuff like that. Um, but I also thought it would have been cool if it were more central. But I feel like, I guess I also can kind of see, and I don't know if this was the author's intention or if this was just my reading into it but it's interesting that you know the steps siblings are white and i don't mean in a like her being subservient kind of way but in a you know if you're degrading this person like just just having her look different from the rest of her step siblings um i think that was interesting does that make sense like instead of everyone being puerto rican and then it's like okay what grounds i mean people hate their stepchildren or have these issues with their stepchildren all the time and i did like later on when we got a little bit deeper into the stepmother's head very close to the end of the book i did like the reasoning behind the last four years like it, it wasn't just arbitrary and she wasn't just being a hater just a hate I don't know. I don't know if that makes sense, but I think what I was trying to say here is that I'm happy that stepmom didn't dislike her because she was Puerto Rican, even though she married a Puerto Rican man, so that would be silly. But I did like that this was never said outright, but that Ella mentions her step siblings being beautiful and pretty and blonde and thinking about many people of color comparing themselves to the Eurocentric standard of beauty. Um, I also appreciated that 
she was very settled in her Puerto Ricanness, though, in her appearance. And while I think some of her commentary about herself came from what she wore or didn't wear or was or was not allowed to wear, it was never like, I'm hideous because I'm darker or brown. Does that make sense? I feel like that is better explained than the two minute ramble from before. But just in case, let me know. And I'll try to do better next time. I guess I like the diversity, but at some aspects, I do wish that her Puerto Ricanness like played a little bit more of a central role. I'm working on the second book now um, because I did enjoy it. I gave it four stars. And um, the girl who it follows, Tori, who appears in this book, she's half Colombian. And it's another one where it's just kind of glossed over. And I think that it could be so cool if her the cultural aspects were delved into a little bit more but anyway so I like the development of her friendships I took some notes because I knew that I would be all over this place in this all over the place in this video um so I like the development of her friendships and the fact that there were a few friends rather than just one one token best friend and that they had differing personalities I saw a few people on Goodreads who complained that they were reduced to their main activity like the writer the soccer player and I feel that a little bit, but not entirely. Like, I feel like it, they definitely developed a little bit more. Um, but my favorite one was definitely the soccer player. Uh, she was the spiciest. Um, and <laughs> I feel like that sounds terrible because she's Mexican. I think she had the most, I don't want to say personality, but she, was definitely far more outgoing than the other two but I did like the fact that she had a bunch of best friends and I like the fact that there were more to the characters the soccer player was an athlete but she had more going on the popular kids had more going on they weren't just cardboard cutouts so I did like that so the next thing I liked that I made sure to note and this may not seem like a big deal to you guys but there's this one point where Cinderella is worrying that Baller 929 will recognize her voice after the um, after the the ball, which was homecoming, actually. And I think in the summary, it said that it was a Halloween party. And I mean, I just thought it was masquerade themed. I didn't realize that it was the Halloween party, but anyway. So Baller 929, she's worried that he'll recognize his voice I recognize her voice and that made me so happy okay I can't tell you how many times I've wanted to slap sighted people uh, who were just like you know they didn't realize that this person was trying to deceive them like they were pretending to be their husband or best friend or whomever like okay I get it I know that you guys live in the visual and it's it's all about what your eyes can see and verify and that's fine but you do have other senses and it was kind of like with Hannah Montana like, she didn't look like herself, so... But the, her voice was the same. Her voice was exactly the same. Did no one ever once go, hey, you sound a little bit like Hannah Montana. Even if they're like, that can't be it. How, Sway, how? On a calmer note, a few things that I didn't like. So we don't know where the story takes place. Um, I know that it takes place at Westwood High, and we see where the stepmom works, we see Ella's house, but I don't see the rest of the town, the rest of the city. Um, she talks about where she wants to go to school. I presume that this story is set in the US, but it's so vague. And on the one hand, it seems like, okay, anyone can set themselves in this story and relate to it. And But I feel like it would make it a lot better if there were just some landmarks. I feel like it would help to ground the story some more rather than it just, floating like this this high school and these places just sort of floating in a nebulous space somewhere in the US I don't know how many square miles this country is but just somewhere hanging out I wasn't sure if it was a big city I mean I think I got the vibe that it was kind of suburban but was it more town-esque I I don't know I wish there had been more details even if we got a vague or just a throwaway comment about the weather in the northeast or something just i wish that it was placed more i wish that there was a little bit more in the way of scenery like yes um i did i don't really know um i 
I just wish that it had been placed more in terms of scenery, you know? That was the only real thing that I disliked. I felt like, you know, it, it gave me what it ad was advertised as. It was a young adult, coming of age, clean romance. Um, it was sweet. I thought it was cool. I liked that there was more beyond Cinderella getting with her prince that there was more to the family stuff. I didn't really buy a few of the character changes near the end, but all in all, I thought it was a good, clean story, and I'm giving it four stars, or maybe 3.5 to four stars, but I just thought it was cute. I thought that if you're looking for something that's it's a fairly quick read, I listened to it rather than um, physically reading it. It was six hours, the narrator was good. I thought that there were a few times where she could have been more expressive but overall I think it was a solid read and in terms of like the books that I've reviewed thus far i.e. these two videos <laughs> it's kind of cool that there's not been anything that's just really angered or upset me I've been having a fairly good reading year so hope you guys enjoyed this and see you next time